can you guys feel that? <laughs> That's the electricity from the earth <laughs> coming through my body. <laughs> this feels great. <laughs> you guys have to try this. <laughs> On a serious note, I never thought grounding or earthing uh, would actually work. Uh, it didn't make much sense to me. And I actually tried it and I have never slept better before in my life. So your body has free radicals. Free radicals can lead to oxidative stress, cause chronic diseases, and free radicals are positively charged. The earth is negatively charged. This is because lightning constantly strikes the earth and charges it with electrons. Electrons are essentially antioxidants for our body. Uh, so just by being in contact with the ground, we are literally absorbing electrons through our hands, through our feet, whatever is in contact with the ground. Having these electrons, these antioxidants, is incredibly important for overall organ function. Uh, with an adequate intake of these electrons and antioxidants from our diet and through the ground, uh, we can prevent many of the modern issues that plague us, modern diseases. So uh, I'm going to show you guys using a multimeter how my body voltage changes uh, when I do various things. So this is going to pertain to actually being on the ground outside, how we can ground ourselves indoors, and mainly going over what we can use in our houses, uh, natural things like the plumbing and the electrical circuits that are built into our house to ground ourselves uh, when we are inside or when we are sleeping. I mean, obviously it would be nice to live in nature, uh, but we know that's not practical. There aren't really a lot of resources out there on grounding. Uh, the one documentary I watched, uh, a Native American woman told a man when he was entering her teepee to take his shoes off. They'll make him sick. Uh, so these Native people, our indigenous ancestors, knew about grounding and being in contact with the earth. And I'm led to believe that uh, the reason Native Americans might have worn moccasins is because they still allowed them to be in contact you know, with the earth without any artificial rubber soles. So here I have a multimeter. For any of you that have done electrical work in the past, you might know that this can be used to measure voltage as well as continuity. Uh, for our purposes today, we're going to use this to measure our body voltage. Uh, I've never used one of these before. I purchased it for uh, $15 off of Amazon. The only thing that's important is that it measures voltage low enough. Uh, this measures in 200 what I believe is millivolts, so we're good to go. The whole electrical system in your house is actually connected to a grounding rod. Uh, the grounding rod is a copper rod that is driven between 5 and 10 feet into the earth. So if there's a short circuit somewhere in your house, the electricity has somewhere to go. Literally right back into the ground. Uh, the black wire here is connected to the COM port. The red wire is connected to the fused, the voltage port. So the black is going to always be connected to a ground source. Out here, since you know we have the earth, we can literally just plug it into the earth. Our conductivity matters here. Uh, if the earth is wet or it recently rained, it will be more conductive. And the red wire is what we're literally going to touch to ourselves to measure our body voltage. Uh, the reason we're doing this is hypothetically, if I'm wearing these rubber-soled shoes and I'm not in contact with the earth, my body reading should be positive. Then when I take the shoes off and step onto the earth, it should go negative. I'm putting the multimeter on the lowest measurement setting. I'm in my shoes right now. And when I touch the meter, it goes up to 60. And then it usually fluctuates around 30. If I start walking around, taking my feet off the earth, it can shoot up to over 100. So it shows that the less contact I have with the earth, how thick the soles of my shoes are, the more positively charged, aka inflammatory, I'm going to be because my body doesn't have as many electrons, as many antioxidants. But if I actually sit down here and let it go back down, usually when I'm on concrete wearing shoes, uh, my body voltage is between three and four. Uh, but the point is that it's positively charged and as I take steps, it shoots up to like 30. So it goes very high. Now, if I take my shoes off, we immediately go negative. So right now I'm at negative 80. And it doesn't seem to matter whether you're on rocks or whether you're on the ground. 
Uh, now we're at negative 30. As long as you're in contact with some sort of natural surface, it seems like you're good to go. Uh, this, again, might be why the Native Americans wore moccasins, because they were grounded while wearing moccasins. We basically want our body voltage to be zero. And this will happen. You know, if I stay out here for like an hour or two, eventually, you know, this number will go to zero and I will be, I guess, free of inflammation. Let's go inside and I'm going to show you guys how to do this practically. Frankie boy, what's going on? What are you doing in the dungeon? Well, if your house is heated by copper pipes, these pipes are actually connected to the water pipe in your house, which is grounded. So technically speaking, if there are no breaks in the connection, all of the radiators in your house should be grounded. And the way to test this is using the continuity tester on uh, the multimeter. But before we do that, I want to show you guys that I can ground myself by touching these pipes. So we're going to put it on the lowest setting. And again, it should be zero because we're not measuring anything. This is the grounding wire. I'm touching my body. Right now my voltage is 8. I'm going to lower my left arm to the copper pipe and rest my arm on the pipe and then touch my body voltage again. We're negative. We're at negative 40 again. So simply by touching the copper pipe that's connected to the ground through the water system, I am grounded. So what we're going to do is go upstairs and test the radiator. Uh, but first, I want to show you guys how to actually figure out if, I mean, yeah, one way you could see if it's grounded is if touching it lowers, you know, your body voltage. That's one way to know. The other way to know is uh, turn this to, it looks like a microphone. Uh, this is the continuity tester. So if I touch these two to this pipe, it's going to measure between the two points if there's an electrical connection. So it should make a noise if there is. So there's an electrical connection here. Now if I touch this pipe and touch that pipe, it should go off again. So you could literally, you know, go here, 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 see if all the pipes are interconnected. And the other issue is you got to go down in your crawl space and see where the water main goes into the ground and test that as well. Uh, I'll see if I can get my camera down there right now. All right, now we are really in the dungeon. So we're basically going to do the same thing with the continuity that we were doing upstairs. This part of the water pipe is what's going into the ground. So we want to test if anywhere along this water pipe, there's a break in the connection because this water pipe goes directly up to the boiler room. So I did this already, so I know there's a connection, but you know, if we touch it, there's always a connection. From the start of this pipe to the end of the pipe, there's a continuous electrical connection. So we know that this pipe is connected directly to the boiler and that's why when we touch these pipes, our body becomes grounded. Okay, so this is one of the many radiators in my house. Uh, at the bottom of this radiator is a copper pipe. Uh, I don't think you guys can really see it, but I'm gonna touch the grounding rod to the copper pipe. I'm gonna measure my body voltage. Body voltage is uh, 13 right now. I'm assuming it's higher because I'm further off the ground. It makes sense. You know, your body voltage goes higher the further away you get from the earth. Now I'm going to touch the pipe. So I touched the pipe and my body voltage went from 15 to negative 50. So this pipe is clearly grounded. Now is the radiator itself grounded? So the outside of the radiator isn't actually grounded, but there's these steel grates that are actually connected to the pipe. So if I touch this to the grates and I press this, body voltage is 15. And if I touch those grates with my finger, my body voltage is slowly going back down to negative 40. So doesn't even just the tip of my finger being in contact takes my body voltage all the way down. So I'm led to believe what determines your body voltage is overall how much of that source is connected with the ground. Since these pipes are connected literally, you know, to the whole city water system, it's safe to say this is a much larger surface area than a five or 10 foot grounding rod for the electricity in your house. One of the grounding setups I have is a wire 
that is actually ran down the side of the house from a bedroom window and the end of this wire is actually attached to a one and a half foot long steel rod unfortunately that doesn't seem to be enough surface area because it does not work uh, this this one doesn't actually work for body voltage and we'll show that later so this is the window that the wire is ran up to this is the end of that wire this buttons onto a wrist strap that is sold on earthing.com uh, you connect it and then there's a steel plate on the inside that stays in contact with your skin if you wear it you know on your arm or on your leg so we have the first connector that's hooked up outside and i have two additional connectors these are actually plugged into an outlet and the bottom prong of an outlet is the ground this is connected to that copper rod we spoke about earlier the five to ten foot copper rod that all the electricity in the house is connected to uh, so technically this is grounded to test if your outlet is safe you need to get one of these outlet testers and you know it has everything on it uh, the correct is the two orange lights on the right and when you plug this in it's correct so that means that the outlet is wired properly and this is all you have to do is plug this in it is time for Frankie Boy to electrocute himself. And all joking aside, the only way you could actually electrocute yourself doing this is if you were connected to a wall outlet and lightning struck your house. I mean, I was reading about that on a forum. I don't think it's too likely, but I guess it's something that could happen. So here I have the wrist strap. I'm gonna put this on. Uh, no wires attached to the strap yet. Here we have the two ends of the wires that are plugged into the outlet and this scotch tape is just weighing this down so it doesn't fall off the bed here we have that other wire this is the one that's ran outside down the house into the ground so i turn the multimeter on to the lowest setting and we have to keep the multimeter grounded uh, by using one of the outlets here so all i need to do is is keep this attached here so whenever I touch myself somewhere, there's always a positive voltage, usually fluctuates up to about eight, and then it goes back down. So when we're not measuring anything, we're fluctuating around zero. As soon as I touch my body, it goes to a positive voltage, usually around eight, and then slowly going down to a slightly higher voltage, uh, usually fluctuating between 0.5 and two. Uh, so we definitely have a positive voltage just sitting here. Now, what if I connect the line from outside to my arm? So now we're connected to outside. Now I'm going to ground the multimeter and measure my voltage. My voltage has gone up drastically. And uh, I've noticed this before. Something is going on with uh, this connection outside. I don't know if there's some sort of weird electricity in the ground. I don't know what's going on, but... For some reason, this line that I ran outside my window actually takes my body voltage up to like 180, which is not a good thing. So for some reason, this wire outside is positively charging my body. I guess it's not actually grounded. Uh, I don't really know what's happening here. But when I disconnect the wire from outside and I connect one of the other outlets, so one outlet I'm going to connect to my arm here and the other outlet we're going to continue to use for the ground. So the multimeter is grounded and now when I measure my body voltage, we're slightly negative. Negative 15, so our body voltage is going more and more negative. Body voltage is negative 150, so there's something weird going on with the outlet. Uh, there's something called dirty electricity. That's basically all the electrical currents in your house from various devices flowing through that outlet. Uh, what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to switch these grounds to another outlet and see if this measurement changes. Okay, so I plugged these two into a pair of outlets on a different side of the room. And the reason I did that is because uh, you can use a type of meter to measure the amount of dirty electricity in outlets. And I think that one measured differently than the one they were previously plugged into. So, again, I'm going to hook myself up. So 
to one of these. I'm going to ground the meter. And I'm going to measure my body voltage. Body voltage is around negative 150 still. Negative 160. I'm going to see what happens if I switch these two and see if there's a difference. So still around 150, 160. So I'm not sure how much of a difference the dirty electricity makes uh, in your body voltage. Uh, but we're fluctuating around 150. So is it safe to use electrical outlets to ground? I'm not really sure what the amount of dirty electricity. Maybe if you cut off the power to your house, it would be okay. I mean, I've been using this and I've been sleeping pretty good. Uh, although I have been getting some unusual heart palpitations from time to time. So I think I'm going to start grounding using my radiator. I've spent the last few hours messing around with this copper pipe. First, I couldn't figure out why this copper pipe was giving me a positive voltage and the copper pipe in the closet was giving me a negative voltage. That ended up being because the pipe was so dirty, so I bought some sandpaper, I sanded down the copper pipe. I figured I was just going to take a grounding clamp and connect a copper wire to the grounding clamp and then I would have my own natural ground connected to the city water supply. Unfortunately, a bronze grounding clamp is not that conductive. And I tried wrapping the copper wire around the pipe and for some reason I wasn't getting as low of a voltage and I realized I forgot to sand down the copper wire. So if you guys look, I don't know if you could really see on the camera, but part of this copper wire is lighter than the rest of it. Uh, that's because I sanded this down and there's an insulated coating on the outside. So I'm going to sand down the rest of this copper wire. I'm going to wrap a few inches of the copper wire around the pipe. I'm going to clamp it down and then we're going to test the voltage. So I've sanded down the copper wire. I wrapped about a foot of it around the pipe. I tightened the grounding clamp over it. Uh, so now we're going to test the conductivity again. So I ground the multimeter. I test my body voltage. It's about three. I touch the pipe. Body voltage goes a bit lower, maybe negative one, which is perfect. Now, if I touch a sanded part of the copper wire instead of the pipe, for some reason the conductivity is actually high. We're measuring at 40. I don't know why the volts go up with the copper wire and when I touch the pipe directly, the volts go down. Uh, I haven't been able to figure this out. This is what's been bothering me for the past hour or two. And I think I'm going to call it at that. I'm at the point where I think this multimeter is not accurate enough for me to uh, to worry about this too much more. You know, I know this pipe is grounded to the entire city water system. I know this copper wire is conductive. I'm going to try sleeping on this tonight, and uh, if you guys want to tune into my live streams, maybe my next few videos, uh, I'll give you guys an update on how I'm sleeping, how things are going. But I'm assuming, uh, on paper, this is the best way to ground yourself. Uh, you could look up a bunch of ways online to make a grounding mat. Uh, that's what I'm probably going to do with this copper wire. So, you know, whether I stand or whether I lay down, um, I, ha I have a way to earth and ground myself without having to worry too much about, you know, having to wear a strap or a wristband. So, uh, that's enough messing around with radiators and copper wires for one day. Um, if you guys have any more questions about this, let me know in the comments. You can get... Uh, the multimeter on my Amazon shop. I'll link that in the comments down below. Uh, you can buy the grounding stuff earlier if you want to try out the outlet stuff, whatever it may be. Uh, that stuff is on my Amazon shop too. Thank you guys so much for joining me on my little adventure today. Please like, subscribe, hit that bell icon, share the video if you can. Guys, above all, I haven't seen any good videos explaining grounding, how to do it, and you know, really implement it practically. Uh, so above all, guys, if you can, please let other people know about this. If you guys would like to support me further, check out some of the other videos on my channel. Also, I've recently launched Frankie's Free Range Meat. My goal to provide you guys with high quality, nutrient dense animal foods. You can go to frankiesfreerangemeat.com and order yourself some grass-fed beef, caviar, raw cheese, anything you need 
to be the optimal version of yourself from a dietary standpoint, we will have for you guys. Thanks again for joining me today. Enjoy the rest of the week.